Other teams keep hitting the Guardians with their aces, but the Guardians keep coming up with a royal flush. We'll talk about how the Guardians beat another ace. Talk about what to watch for in the rest of this series against the Twins this weekend. And we'll get into a little bit of college baseball watching and MLB draft stuff coming up this weekend. All today's Locked On Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show today. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB. Use the code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Uh, I want to give a shout out to everyday or Tim Metal Metalvis who uh, who had remembered the Nemo Little Nemo game. We, we got a comment that someone else remembered it, and that using game guides he beat it. Uh, he People mentioned kid, the pop culture references. Yeah, you know, he mentioned kid, kid Icarus. That was that was. I remember that was one of those games that blew my mind as a kid because it was so weird. And then as adult, I finally beat that one. So that, that, that's a fun one. Um, you know, I, I well, I'll, I'll think about what is going to be my obscure video game reference of the day. Um, but uh, I'll save that. So tune in for the end of the show to get that one. Uh, <laughs> hey, the, the Guardians finally don't have the same record as the 2023 Guardians. And this was I I had to run some errands today because I had to do some adulting. So I listened to this one. Well, Justin got to watch most of it. So whenever there was a close play, I'd be I'd be texting and talking and trying to figure out what was going on. But Man, they uh, what a performance offensively by the bullpen again. I know the bullpen again wasn't All perfect, phases, but it was yeah. good enough. And a lot of guys are really excelling. But uh, I just wish that Loriano, I don't know if we reached base at all in this one. He might have been the only guy who didn't last time I checked before I had to run out. I just wish he had gotten that walk when they put up their first set of runs. I feel like if he had gotten that rock walk, they had knocked out Laura, um, Lopez even earlier. They had someone up at that point. Mm-hmm. And you could have really gotten into a bad pen and then wrecked this whole weekend. Because now they get a day to recover. But you could have really wrecked this weekend for the Twins and set them up for even more success. But that's just me being nitpicky. Yeah, the day to recover is going to help both of them a little yeah. bit, especially. Uh, thanks for a bunch of you found your way over to the podcast uh, yesterday. We appreciate that. Yes. Some more good numbers. We Cover the Guardians every single day, win or lose. Some of you are much happier with listening to us after a win. Some not so much after a loss, which which I understand. I listen to a lot of Ohio State podcasts, and they are hard to listen to after a loss. So I totally understand. But uh, we are the only podcast that's covering the Guardians five days a week. We are in your feeds. Monday, are we the only one covering Friday, them even so. like two days a week? Uh, <laughs> it just feels like there's yeah, not a lot. Three, three, three. Okay. More than three. There's others that are doing two, but... We're here every day. We break down every win, every loss, every storyline, every trade, even even the minor trades. Jeff has like a couple nows up on Zach Kent and Peter Strzelczyki. Mm-hmm. So we literally cover your team every day, every part of your team. So today we're talking about the sweep and we'll talk about college base. So we talk about everything on the Guardians uh, from the majors yeah. to the draft. We, and we've both been covering this team, this organization since 2007. So it's a long time. Um, you've been all the way with the guardians. I had about 10 year hiatus where I still, you know, covered the guardians, but I was more focused on draft and prospects when I had that national gig, um, at scouting 24 seven. But even then it was always, you know, guardians first in my heart, but yeah, we, we know that, uh, listen, we'll put on front street SB nation, their podcast are closing down. That's going to open a new avenue of people who want coverage and, you know, Hey, put it in the comments, like if you appreciate our coverage, that helps get more eyes. It helps drive the algorithm. And it might help a new person, like, give it a, a whirl, stick with us, and so they can join the cult of Travis Bazana. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What <laughs> we really want to do maybe is... They'll, maybe what it'll do, Jeff, maybe what it'll do is we'll convince the Guardians to finally let us have Tanner Bybee back on the back podcast. On the as, uh, what, I mean, let's be honest. Jordan that's, that's... CLE is begging for I do want to thank Jordan <laughs> thank you, Jordan. 22. Appreciate uh, <laughs> I guess that is kind of our, our initial one. It's it's so funny about just how much we were pushing Tanner's greatness. Um, so much so that I feel like Tanner's dad uh, would even come out and be like, yeah, no, that's you guys were first. 
This is the first, like, yeah. <laughs> we, we, his family would be like, you know, I, I, his, his family were the first to know this guy was going to be an ace. But I feel like outside his immediate family, his family would probably be like, no, it was Lockdown Guardians, Justin and Jeff. They, they knew it. They pay attention. Yeah. And you were even, you were even before me, you had him number one and I followed suit because I, I agreed. Great game for Bybee. Obviously the first game out this nice, year for nice him. A little bit tougher. Back. Yeah, for sure. He, you know, there was some talk. Even even Shane Bieber mentioned this in Seattle. I thought this was interesting. Um, you know, he had some, Bybee in, in Oakland had some issues gripping his chain, not gripping his changeup, but figuring out where it was going to land and where he could throw it because of the wind. And then Shane Bieber said something similar in Seattle earlier this week saying that he wanted to throw the curveball more, but he couldn't because of the wind. Because if you, Seattle's got a dome, but it's not a um, it's a roof and not a full enclosed um, building because it's just a dome where the rain can't get in the top and the outside air is still blowing through and you're still getting natural wind. So he couldn't control the curveball the way he wanted. So they had to change the game plan. I got to think I mean, maybe the, maybe the Guardians knew this. Maybe they didn't. I'll start here with Tanner Bybee, but it seems like they picked up on something because Tanner Bybee threw. 32 sliders today as opposed to 28 fastballs and he threw 27 changeups. Obviously the changeups are a great pitch for him, but the twins just had a very hard time with his slider. It was very, he was able to mix the velocity. Like there were times I was like, his slider was like 86, 87 and even threw it 88. And I'm like, is that a cutter? It looks like he was taking something off of it sometimes and he was, he was adding onto it, but the twins took 12 swings against this slider today and they'd missed seven times. Uh, he threw it for six called strikes. So really good slider for Tanner Bybee and the twins just had nothing they could do with it. I mean, they didn't put it in play a whole lot. Um, and then, you know, the fastball command was okay early, not great. Uh, he only got two called strikes that all day. So it wasn't fantastic, but he established it. And then the changeup, I mean, he was throwing the changeup to everybody too. He got six swings and misses on the changeup, 17 whiffs today overall for, for Tanner Bybee, a pretty solid turnaround from that first start. No, uh, what did he have? One walk today? No walks. No walks. Today. No walks. Right. Yeah. And was... not only that, but that and... that second inning where things could have got was it the second inning or first inning where things could have gotten dicey for him. Was it the first? No, now you're making me because I missed the first inning because I was still teaching. These three o'clock starts are not ideal yeah. for me. It was it was it was the first inning because yeah, that, was the that was the inning where um, Alex Kirilov tripled off the wall. And I know some people were like, oh, Miles Straw could have caught that. I'm like. Yeah, he probably could catch it, but it's still a great play even for a, a fielder like Miles Straw. So I was like thinking like that was the first time that we saw, I don't want to say Freeman got exposed, but probably a, a ball that he's not going to get to. But again, I think I think that even if Miles Straw makes that play, it's still a very terrific play. It's not it's not problem a routine with, play. At the that. problem with Straw was last year he was the straw of 2023 was not the same straw of 2022 defensively, not defensively. Yeah. The metrics. So, so we don't even know if he could get to that. Like there's going to be that second guessing, but I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's the early going, but it, you, anyone who's pining for miles straw, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I, I don't think it was that. I think it was just saying like, okay, this is the first time that, you know, a ball Freeman couldn't get to yeah. is probably a, a ball that's that we could have gotten to last year because, of straw or, you know, a Zimmer, whoever, but you know, again, no matter who's in center field, that play would have been spectacular. It would have had to be a great play. So no faulting for Freeman there in general, but Bybee came back and struck out two hitters and got a fly out. So he picked it up right away. And once he got out of that, things got much better for him. I mean, I know there were other points in the game, but that could have been an inning where things got away from him very quickly and it could have been ugly, but he bounced back, uh, especially because the guardians had a quick inning against Pablo Lopez in the first inning. He was perfect through three. So the Guardians uh, did a good job of, of getting to him another time through, but great start for Bybee and, and no surprises there. I mean, that's – I just really wonder if they kind of adjusted the game plan on the fly or if he came in wanting to throw that slider because, man, it just uh, – the Twins had no answer for that slider most of the day. Yeah, I I mean, the game planned it well, and, you know, the, the funny thing with this team right now is I never – words I never thought I'd say – is they lead the league in runs scored. Um, they lead the league in slugging percentage as well, I believe, even though they're not hitting home uh, runs because they lead the league in doubles. Um, I don't think they lead the league in slugging percentage anymore. I was just was looking it, at that before. Or we was came it extra? On. Maybe it was extra base hits. It was something. And they led the league in stolen bases. Those were all things that came up when I was listening to the game today. Like uh, it, They're fourth in steals now, and okay. they are 
They're th- they're se- they're third in doubles. Okay. Yeah. But it's still. And then as far as slugging goes, they're actually middle of the pack. They are. So maybe it's extra base hits. slugging it. Yeah, I have to. I'd but have to double check on that. It, but they're know, 14th it's... in slugging. They're mediocre. Yeah. Mediocre was a huge improvement over last year in slugging. <laughs> last year they were bottom five. Now they're now they're mediocre and. And we said before, you know, coming into the season, we did kind of our preview with the offense. We said, what numbers do they have to beat from a year ago? And it's only eight games, so we're not going to sit here and pat ourselves on the back or declare the Guardians are going to the World Series. But they, we said that they had to be just middle of the pack offensively if the pitching was this good. And, hey, they're middle of the pack offensively in terms of slugging. And the pitching has been fantastic. So, so far... You know, so good. We'll see. Yeah, and There's a lot of games it, left to play. And I know we got to run to break, but before we run to break, the the starting pitching has had its ups and downs. But the we're gonna spend some time on the bullpen in the next part. It's very important because remember, like Kate Smith made this team with them being like, "Hey, only if we can't get somebody better." And a <laughs> lot of guys made this team yeah. like, "Hey, you are here until Williams and Henches and all these guys get healthy. You are filler, not anymore. The filler is not filler anymore. They traded for some interesting depth." All of a sudden, this is the deepest bullpen in the league. Um, you know, we'll see if it sticks, but it, it's kind of, it's it's fun to watch. It's encouraging. It's and encouraging. It's, and could it be a, a good week? Yes, those absolutely happen. But I, I think there's one guy in particular that we got to get to who is emerging. Yes. Uh, number to know for next segment is 0.923. No, not the radio station. That is 9.923. Tell you what that means when we come back in just a moment here on Lockdown Guardians. If you are like me and you get home or you get off of work at uh, you know a little bit later and you're looking for something to do as far as dinner is concerned, uh, Factor Meals is definitely the way to go. As the weather gets better and you want to enjoy more things in life, you can eat stress-free with Factor's delicious ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat in just two minutes. Think how much time that can save you after work and get you going to, you know, kids sporting event or help them with homework or just relax and do something else. You know, they also have options like calorie smart keto, protein plus vegan and veggies. So no matter what your diet is, they've got an option for you. Plus 60 add ons every week, like breakfast on the go, lunches, snacks, no fuss, no mess meals, eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, cleaning up. I know it takes me a lot of time every night when I get off work too. You can simply heat and savor all of your favorite meals with factor. Head to factormeals.com slash lockdown MLB50 and use our code lockdown MLB50 to get 50% off your first box. Plus, they'll get 20% off your next box as well. That is code lockdown MLB50 at factormeals.com slash lockdown MLB50 and get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Hey, let's not talk about our good friends over at Prize Picks. I was actually just loading up the app to look at it today. Uh, right now, when I look at what's popping over there, is that still an expression people use? I'm going to talk, talk about the three things I see here. One, for Friday, Tarek Skubal, more or less, 8Ks versus Oakland. I'm going to take more. I think that's a good one. Zach Littell, 4.5Ks versus Colorado. I kind of yes. want it. You're going to say Rocky more? Stink right now. I know they stink, yeah, but he doesn't strike right dudes now. out. And Austin Gomber three more or less versus on the other side of that. I, I don't I don't know how I, I feel less about that. Uh, I was going to see if we had anything interesting. How about old friend Nolan Jones one and a half bases versus Tampa Bay for Friday? Yes, I'll take the overall. He's had a rough start, so yeah, he's know. had a rough start. But I'm kind of tempted to take that one. Zach Gedloff half a base. JJ Blade oh, Nick easy. Allen. Do you think any of them can get to you a don't base? Like JJ uh, hitter strikeouts. J.D. Davis, one and a half. If any of these are catching your fancy, that's what Price Picks is all about. You don't have to worry about facing a genius with a spreadsheet. It's just you versus the numbers. Look at those numbers. Figure out which ones work for you. And they have tournaments. You know, playoffs are beginning April 20th. Play in round 16, 17, 19th. Playoff action with a chance to win 100 times your money. Uh, Prize Picks offers weekly promotions and special bonuses to fans. So download the app, go to the website. I was using the website, if I'm being honest. Use the code locked on MLB. That's what I used at sign up for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's locked on MLB, all lowercase, all one word. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Good 
Guardians are off on Friday. We're weird. off day after the it's Guardians. Weird. <laughs> the twin, the Sorry. Opener. But, yeah, it is weird. But Saturday and Sunday, if you were out like Jeff today running errands, do not miss an action of or any pitch of the action over the weekend. If you have your serious XM app in your car or on your phone, just search Guardians on your app to listen to Tom Hamilton and Jim Rosenhaus call games two and three over the weekend of this series. All right, you want to talk about the bullpen a little bit, and I also want to talk about a couple things the offense did that I thought was really impressive for a team that, you know, they only scored four runs today, but I want to talk about a few things they did well today. But the bullpen, Hunter Gaddis, high leverage Hunter Gaddis. Yeah, he's, you know, they're kind of using Morgan in that role, and he's had some ups and downs, let's be honest. Normally he is nails in the first half, so that's not ideal. But, yeah, he's, he's looked really good, and we just go back to you and I being told, straight out that he uh, he was tipping pitches a year ago. And, you know, it, now we're seeing a guy who is not tipping pitches and he's been really good. Like the biggest fault today is he, he got that wild pitch that might have been more pass ball than wild pitch. I think we can debate that. Um, but yeah, it's. You know, it, it's fun to, to look at, to consider, to talk about with him because that change up. I always thought there was a chance for him with his size, a little more velocity and a wicked change to be the plus Eli Morgan. And maybe we're seeing some of that because Morgan had less velocity, less size, but also had a wicked change. Like that's, that's the plus pitch for both guys there. Um, you know, it was funny listening to the game because Hammy's like, Oh man, uh, Buxton just struck out on a hanging change. I'm like, I don't, know. I don't think, you know, when he is on there's there's such a thing as a hanging change with Gaddis. It has so much movement. It's hard for guys to pick up in any situation. It is. I think the Guardians must must have had something in the game plan because if you look at all of the pitchers' arsenals today, you know we talked about Tanner Bybee's slider. He threw thirty two. Tim Heron threw twelve. Hunter Gaddis threw four uh, out of his ten, and then Scott Barlow threw twelve of twenty. Then you know, Mano Class A threw eleven, fourteen pitches. Only eleven were eleven were cutters. That's just a Mano Class A. But yeah. every pitcher but Class A had more sliders than fastballs today. I got to think that there was a game plan there. Like they're the twins, I believe are like top five in terms of strikeouts as hitters. Um, They are sixth in baseball and strikeouts as a team. I got to think that, you know, that was an intentional thing. They knew that spin could beat them. And Gaddis was the right guy for that job. He's got a great slider. Um, I know he has, has a good changeup. It was much better today, better than it was a year ago. And of course, top of the fastball is up to 97, 98 now, which is, you know, it was 95, 97 today. Fantastic. But, um, and Heron, Heron was good for the first couple of batters he faced, but then, you know, kind of got left out maybe a little bit too long if you want to be nitpicky and, and got into some trouble. But he just he wasn't hit a looking as good. And I get it. They had two lefties in the lineup. They wanted him to get through both of those. But man, his velocity was down. His control was off. It just, it kind of fell apart yeah. on him. Yeah, it did. All right. So the bullpen continues to be good. I, I like that. We're seeing different guys in different spots. You have Class A. Barlow was a little less shaky today than he has been so he far. He started shaky, and then he was nails. And he picked it up. He picked it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Morgan struggled. They've trusted Sandlin. Cade Smith is already pitching himself into a trusted role. Obviously, we just said Gaddis is. I think Heron is still um, is going to do that as well, at least until Hentges comes back. It'd be great to have two lefties, honestly. And then Tyler Bede. I beat the other night, you know, through late in the game, and he was fantastic. So they're using him all over the place. I like moving the different guys around and playing the matchups, which both said he would do. So it's great. That was just the third appearance by Class A. It was pretty painless for him. So kudos to the bullpen. They are continuing to keep it going. All right. I said before we started this segment that the number to know was 0.923. That is not the radio station. That, Jeff, is the Guardians um, OPS. OPS against starting pitchers the second time through the order coming into two Thursday's game, not, not including Thursday's game. So actually it should go up because they hit Pablo Lopez much better the second time through the order. That seems to be a theme for the guardians offense. You know, they, they were shut down by Luis Castillo early on in the first game there and in their second game in Seattle and they picked things up and then, you know, they were being it was a perfect game for Pablo Lopez the first three innings and then the, the third inning they came back and got their runs. So this team second time through the order is making adjustments. It's good to see again, it's yeah. early, 
We're not going to sit here and say the Guardians offense is fixed and this is a playoff team. There'll be ups and downs. Contenders. Yeah, there are going to be ups and downs. But hey, I, anytime you can, you can go the second time to the order and beat up on the starter, especially when yeah. it's Luis Castillo, Pablo Lopez. You got to be doing something well, right. It's not just the, all luck. You know, not to interrupt, but I'm going to interrupt. I saw the athletic today. You know, Saros and their whole group. Like, is it the number two rotation in baseball was Seattle? And Cleveland just mm-hmm. got through that rotation, facing two of their, their top their two, pitchers two pitchers and their worst. Um, and the worst is the one that beat them. So there's there's a lot of reasons for hope. Now, can there be a hot stretch? Absolutely. But let's not focus on that. Let's just have fun. This is a fun time. Like, a baseball season is long. There are ups. There are downs. <laughs> there are hill. There are valleys, and there are mountaintops. Right now, we're ascending. Let's enjoy the ascent. You know, young guys are hitting. Enjoy young it. guys are looking good. We, you know, I'm never going to cease getting excited for these types of performances. Like it is a ceaseless thing yeah. when a team is this strong consistently. And there's a lot of young players playing very, very well, uh, in, including a, a certain uh, second baseman. Yeah, another good day for Andre Semenis. He had a, a hit and he got hit by pitch, so he continues to get on base. And uh, the hit the was with free run. Like- he, you know, it, that's what kind of opened things up for them there, advancing the runner and the. Yeah, that play, it wasn't just his hit. What it was in the fourth inning, the Guardians scored three runs. Um, Jimenez got thrown out at home. It was a ground ball to third base off the bat of Josh Dan. It was hard. It was a hard hit. It was a nice play by yeah. the third baseman, um, Willie Castro, former Indian. Um, Nate, or Jimenez broke for home on contact, obviously. You know, look at him at force of play or hoping the ball got through. But what that allowed the Guardians to do is, is both Naylor got to second base and Quan got to third ahead of him. So those two guys ended up getting in the scoring position. And then Freeman came through with a hit the next time up. And then Brennan had the sack fly that scored Naylor. If Jimenez doesn't run to home on that ground ball by Josh Naylor, that's a double play. If the if uh, Castro looks him back to third, he goes yeah. to second, and then he easily gets Naylor at first base. And then um, maybe maybe the, the single by Freeman scores Jimenez anyway but you don't get the sack fly from Brennan. So you don't get that second run uh, right there. The third run, I should say. So kudos to Jimenez. I know that's going to go overlooked, but, and it looks like, you know, yeah. Oh, he got thrown at home. Stupid play. No, that ended up being a great play because it kept him out of the huge. play. It moves two runners up. You stay one out and you get three runs that inning. That was a huge play that just, you know, it's one of those things, the box score that's just not going to show up. Yeah. No, yeah, I it's like it's a little like, bit, everything right, right now. Like it's, it's hard to really find much fault. Um, it is that contract already paying for itself. All right. We got a couple of one more offensive, two more offensive notes to talk about and a little bit of defense that I didn't really like. We'll talk about, and then we'll talk about what to watch for this weekend between the guardians and the draft. Did you know that even if you have a 401 K for retirement, you can still have an IRA. Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees do apply. Now for some legal info. Claims as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss, limitations to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered brokered dealer. Don't forget to listen to the Guardians action all weekend long on your Sirius XM app. Got Carlos Carrasco and Joe Ryan at 210 on Saturday. Just search Guardians on your Sirius XM app. All right. Good offense from Brian Rocchio. He had a walk today. No hits, but that walk, just watching him, like you can kind of see the growth offensively from him from when he was in the minors. He didn't like strike out a ton. But he was always a guy who was willing to chase out of the zone, and you could see breaking pitches low were hard for him to lay off of sometimes. And that walk against Pablo Lopez in today's game, I just thought, just showed a lot of growth from him offensively. The only thing I didn't like 
he's still chasing a lot though. That's that's my concern. It's like he's he's still got a twenty four percent K rate. There's still some chase going on with him. Um, there is, but his walk rate is up a little bit, which is good. So I think he's. Yeah. I mean, he's he's got the highest bat pip on the team. Uh, so th- there's that. Yeah. I, I do, you know, it's like I know everyone wants to get super excited, and you know, like he is the number it's one can. Yeah, he's the number one candidate for regression right now on this team. Um, yeah. But I'll take the eight percent walk rate from him. It's not yeah, something. No, that's a step forward. I would like to see the K rate go down. Um, I know the defensive run saved metric really doesn't like him short in the early going, so we'll see. Yeah, how it bounces out. But you know, there's been his arm is just inconsistent right now. He'll make a great throw and then and then two poor ones or like five great and then one bad. So that's a rookie. We're just waiting to see consistency across the board with him. Um, yeah, he's he's the the walks are important though. It's the same thing we talked about, like with Freeman. Um, you know, he's he's at an eight point seven percent walk rate. Like that's what we need to see. Um, you know, Kwani at two point nine with a uh, near four hundred bat pips. The other guy we know. Is yeah, there. early season stats are weird. The only yeah, yeah. Rokio defensively to me it hasn't even been his arm. To me, it's been he's made some really fantastic plays so far. But like today. He had two plays. One of them was on a relay where they would have, would have gotten Kirill off at third in the first inning, but he couldn't get the ball out of his glove and to make a throw. And then, and then, then he also had a play uh, later in the game that led to uh, more pitches for Bybee. It was a ground ball. He probably should have fielded. And they're lucky that the runner didn't go home on that and score because they easily would have. But, you know, he makes some spectacular plays and then he just makes some. That, that was something Cleveland always talked about him with the minors too, was always looking for consistency from defense to defense. That's not, that's not to say he's not mentally focused. It just, it's the way it's been for him. Um, yeah. Speaking of defense, Bo Naylor, rough day for him. Yesterday, he, only had, he only had one, he only had, he had one pass issues. ball. Yeah. He only had one pass ball, but the second one was a wild pitch on Hunter Gaddis, which I thought was pretty close. I mean, maybe it was a wild pitch, maybe not, but it probably still was a ball that, Bo could have gotten to, and he had a wild pitch earlier in the game. And I saw some people saying, can we talk about how bad he is on defense? And it's not that he's bad. It's just that there's still. He's lackadaisical so for far. Like that's what it's from in the past is sometimes he gets a little lax behind the plate and doesn't like fully extend. Or remember like last year when you sent me the video with like that ball in triple A. Just like, yeah, he just didn't die. He didn't, he didn't, didn't move his legs and, for it. He tried to backhand it, which is, yeah, and, which is what and he, he does. Yes, and that we're still seeing that he is trying to backhand things he should not be trying to backhand, and the ball gets away from. Him. He just needs. I will again, say the first pass ball. Yeah, I'll say I'll say the first pass ball today on him looked like it might have been a glove issue. Like it was pretty close to where it might have been a weird glove thing, but also probably could have gotten out further on that one. But rough day for him. There's gonna be there's gonna be growing pains from him defensively. That's just how it 100%. is. I think he will be a league average defender in the long run because he has the work ethic. He has the athleticism. I don't have any doubts about him as a, as a, a worker to get to that level. So I think he'll be fine. Um, the other thing I thought was weird today before we kind of wrap things up was um, Ramon Laureano in there today against the right-hander, no Estevan Florial. And I tried to look at numbers and think, okay, maybe Laureano just does better against pitchers like Pablo Lopez, but um, Lopez likes to throw the fastball a lot and, and Loreano's a fastball hitter. He didn't do anything today offensively. Maybe he was for defense. I don't know. It's hard to say, but, and Florio's a good defender too, but, um, the only thing I can think of is like Loreano makes more contact than, than Florio in general. And, and Lopez is a strikeout pitcher. They only struck out twice today. So and he had two of them. He had two strikeouts himself. So I don't know. Lopez only struck two batters out, which is good for the guardians, but, I don't know. It was just weird why Laureano was in there against a uh, a right hander. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, it's uh, you know, we'll, we'll it, the one thing I do love is the flexibility and the trying and the flipping and the we'll see how it goes. Like make these opportunities. I'm I'm loving that right now. Mm-hmm. All right, what to watch for this weekend? Obviously, the Guardians have two more against the Twins. I know Jeff's not real high on the Guardians' chances the rest of the weekend, but. You got to feel good going into an off day after beating Pablo Lopez. You do. The bullpen's going to be rested for both teams, but especially the Guardians. Um, and you already beat their ace, so that's a good sign for the offense. Joe Ryan and Carlos Carrasco. I think on that's Saturday. the hardest was, one. And then we'll see if Sunday's game I mean, goes. I mean, uh, Hammy yeah. seemed to think, I was that thinking, there was a zero percent chance. 
the tw- the Guardians really pulled out their slider today against on Thursday against the Twins, and it seemed like a a, a planned thing. And I was going to say, well, maybe that's good for Carrasco because he's got a good slider. Well, last year his slider got tattooed, and he hasn't really thrown a lot this year, so I don't know. In the past, that's been a good pitch for Carrasco, but he's also 37 now, and um, who knows? But we'll see how that goes, hopefully for a better start for him. Joe Ryan, tough, tough customer, but hey, Guardians have been good at beating good pitchers so far this year. Sunday, you have Tristan McKenzie and Bailey Ober. Bailey Ober got absolutely thwacked by the by the Royals the first time around this year, so who knows what he's going to look like in the second start. McKenzie, though, did have a good slider his first time out against Oakland. So, um, you know, maybe he throws a lot of sliders. Or was it – I'm sorry, it was Seattle, not Oakland, right? No, he threw against Oakland. Or was it, it was Seattle. It's only it was eight Seattle. games. I, Seattle. I've already forgotten. Right. It was Seattle. Yeah, it was Seattle. He threw, yeah, it was, it was a short start. He he threw a lot of sliders, and, and nobody – didn't give him a hit off it. So, hopefully he can turn to the slider a little more against the Twins, the way they struggled against it. Um on Thursday as well. So all interesting things to watch. Jeff, we got some good college baseball this weekend. First off, I'm going to ask you this, because this is the most important question. More home runs this weekend. We've got Travis Bazana versus Arizona state, but it's in Corvallis, not Arizona. Braden Montgomery versus South Carolina in South Carolina, which they generally have decent pitching, or we've got Charlie Condon and the Georgia Bulldogs versus Mississippi state. Who you take it? Who's got more home runs this weekend in this group? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, Condon because no one's actually pitching to Bazana anymore. South Carolina's got better pitching than Mississippi State. Mississippi State's kind of in an in-between rebuild type of situation right now. Like, I mean, they're fine. They're just yeah. not quite as strong as they were. So, um, you know, maybe if they, if a team would actually have the bravery to pitch to Bazana, it'd be a different story. But I mean, that he doesn't even have a hundred uh, at bats yet. No. Uh, yeah. Not good. Yeah. He's no one's going to, no one is pitching to him. He's like, we look for a hundred at bats so we can look at like da- data on baseball reference. And he hasn't appeared yet because no one will pitch Between to the walks. dudes. Yeah. It, it's almost the Oregon state's offense is top heavy. Yeah. I'll say Condon yeah. as well. I think Mississippi state is, um, yeah. Santa's not going to get pitched to you. I think South Carolina is decent. And then Mississippi state. They got, got to throw it out there that with... Henry Ford, uh, he's a freshman. He's not draft eligible. He's hit three Here, home runs yeah. tonight. Henry Ford, yeah. He's hit wow. three home runs last, tonight for Virginia. So that's stuff. Fun, a lot of fun, good freshmen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, what, Drew Burris and him. Yeah. I'm going to so. watch on Friday night. Uh, I'm supposed to cover the captains on Friday if they play. The weather looks kind of iffy, but I'm going to watch uh, Miami's Gage Zeal versus Duke. Duke's had a good offense this year. Zeal's had some good game, uh, good games this year. He might be a top 48 guy. We'll, we'll see what, what happens there with the Guardians. And then uh, Friday or Thursday night, we already saw Luke Coleman versus Vanderbilt. He had 10 strikeouts in what was it, five innings? Six five innings, and a third. It was, it was, no, he, he was a partial inning once it was five and a third. Yeah. And he, but he gave up four runs on, on four, four earned and four hits. Yeah. Very strange game for him, but it 10 was. strikeouts against Vanderbilt, even though I don't really love Vanderbilt's lineup, I'll take the 10 K's and the five and two thirds. I still like Luke Coleman. And then, uh, Wake Forest versus Virginia Tech. You've got Carson Martini there, who you really like. Obviously, yeah. we have Nick Kurtz in that game, and hopefully, you know, King Josh Harlow you know, pulls it rounder. together. And, Chase Burns. That should be an interesting game to watch this weekend as well. And the minor league teams are all back in action, uh, weather depending. The Columbus Clippers played a doubleheader on Thursday. Tanner Burns pitched up to 95 in that one, so that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, Nick Enright has also seen his velocity up. He's been missing a ton of bats. Good for him. And then, you know, we've got uh, Alex Clemmy makes his pro debut for Lynchburg on Friday night, but that game won't be televised because down east, doesn't have MILB TV. The captain's pit playing on Friday and Akron plays Friday. So my league baseball back in full swing. We'll have a report on that next week. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Thank you all for joining us, rating and reviewing, downloading. It helps make sure you're telling a friend. Best place to get Cleveland guardians information is right here. Uh, we appreciate Five each and every week. one of our every dayers. You know who you are. We gave a few shout outs already. Jordan. Throughout the show today, Jordan, who's being absolutely merciless with the guardians twitter thank you uh and thank you all for joining us and go go guardians go beat the twins